I did a video a while back where I asked the question, is Uniqlo salvage denim, is it any good? And the answer to that was yes, it is very, very good. But that begs another question, is the rest of their denim any good? And that's exactly the question we're going to be answering today. So I actually ended up getting a whole outfit, which I didn't actually mean to do. But here's the thing about Uniqlo, for better or worse, everything just works together. You can see that there is this uh, holistic approach to just everything that they're producing. It's actually quite impressive to see when you consider how many product categories this is actually rolled out over. It's also kind of terrifying when you consider it from a uh, consumption-driven democratic design perspective. Everything ends up just looking the same. It would be extremely simple to walk into any Uniqlo anywhere and walk out looking pretty fitted. Then it is just one brand's vision of whatever that aesthetic might be. And that really detracts to at least what I find fascinating about menswear, but fashion in general. But, okay, that is wandering far too far off the point. Denim. That is the point. Now, in my brief look around about their offering, uh, the, the denim selection from Uniqlo seems to be split into two sections. There's all of the jeans that come in anything from a really heavily, heavily washed down, very, very stretched fabric, right to the, the Uniqlo U-line, which, uh, as I explained earlier, that's absolutely amazing. And everything in between. Then hidden off in the corner were their other denim items, which I would say are the interesting denim pieces. And this is where we see that holistic approach in full effect. We have a work shirt, a pair of carpenter pants, and a chore coat. Throw that all together, and whether you like it or not, you can't disagree that this works from a tutorial or a narrative perspective. This is, this is workwear, top to toe. And it kind of makes sense that they go with this workwear thing. I mean, it's on trend, or at least it was on trend when they were designing this collection, I guess. And here's what I really, really like about it. Here's what I appreciate about it. It's not the obvious blue collar, stolen valor uniform. The, the, the pants, they're not double knees, the shirt is not a hoodie, and the jacket isn't a Detroit. They're workwear staples, certainly. They're, they're classic workwear staples, but not the obvious ones. It's still trend-driven, but it's not a slave to that trend. And I like that. That means that these pieces are going to be a little bit more timeless, or put it this way, a little bit more relevant for longer, and that adds value. Okay, but let's take a look at these three things individually, starting with the shirt. This is a work shirt, or, well, it's a shirt in the work shirt style. I intend to do absolutely no manual labor in this whatsoever, as I imagine most of the other Uniqlo customers of this shirt intend to do absolutely no manual labor whatsoever. That work shirt style is typically a plain, simple design. Utilitarian, no bells, no whistles. Two chest pockets, no flaps in that pockets. A button closure, no fancy yoke on the back, no yoke at all on the front. Typically made of a hard wearing, tough fabric like chambray, like denim, indigo dyed, and that's hence the moniker, blue collar. And yeah, this has all of that, so it's a work shirt. I think the fit is really good. It's, it's just, it's a touch oversized. That's not too big. It's cut to be oversized, which seems to be the Uniqlo aesthetic. And the denim is a very, very wearable weight. I could even see this, this being comfortable in the hotter months. I mean, just a guess, but I would put this around about, I don't know, like six ounces there or thereabouts. It's, it's kind of hard to tell with this wash because that softens up the fabric. And speaking of that wash, you've got, two options with this. You've got this one, which I'd say is a mid-wash, and then you've got a rinsed version. So that's not raw, it's just gone through a rinse to soften up a little bit. It's a much deeper, much darker tone than this. I went with this shirt style because, or this shirt wash, because I felt it added a little bit of contrast to the outfit. I mean, you've got the, 
the deep indigo work pants and you've got the e-crew jacket and this mid-wash just seemed to work the best with these two pieces. But let's have a look and see what a Uniqlo work shirt looks like really up close with the buttons. So this is something that I noticed when I was trying it on. At first, I thought they just weren't very well attached. On closer inspection, they're actually set quite far off from the fabric. And this is something you more commonly see on or maybe like a, a heavy winter coat or something like this, something where you've got like a thick, maybe melting wool fabric, where if you just sew a button directly onto that fabric, you'd have a little bit of a hard time getting it closed. So they sort of offset the button a little bit, so you've got more room to play with. I don't know why they've done that here. I don't think it's really very necessary. And as I said, it just feels like the button's about to fall off. The pockets are a, a decent size, pretty standard as I said before no flaps they're nicely finished on the inside as well okay glasses test yeah they passed the glasses test so yeah they're, they're, they're chest pockets on a shirt there's not too much to say and they're quite well done I mean I, I guess we could say about them there's a nice double needle stitch that's running around about them and they're bar tied to the corners and following on from that is the triple needle, needle stitching on not the rest of the shirt, but on over the yoke and, and around the, where the arms are attached. That's a nice workwear detail. And it goes a little bit of a way to show that whoever was putting this together, who's the, whoever was designing it, knows their stuff, knows how workwear is traditionally put together. I guess most Uniqlo customers I hope I'm not disparaging any of them, but I guess they're gonna, not gonna notice that this is triple needle stitched. But it's, it's a nice detail and I'm happy to see that. And let's have a look at the rest of the construction on the inside of the shirt. Okay, nice. Very, very cleanly done. Like really, everything is, is overlocked. So there's, there's no, um, what's that called? No, everything is flat felt, so there's no overlocking. That's what I wanted to say. So there's no sort of raw edge showing anywhere that I can see. Okay, this is interesting here. This is something that I saw on the, the Uniqlo U selvage denims. Uh, they, they've reinforced the, they've reinforced the bar tacks on the, on the pockets here. And they've also reinforced the, where the button is attached in the pockets. What else, what else, what else? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, again, I, something quite typical for work shirts is that they've got a little gusset at the side seam here. It's, it, it's not, <laughs> I, I keep coming back to this point, this is something that would be very easily overlooked. And I guess uh, quite a few production steps need to be taken to, to put this in. I mean, production steps impact the actual cost per, per item. So I, a lot of quote-unquote fast fashion brands would just leave this out as something unnecessary. So I like to see that the Uniqlo has actually included this. And last, we've got the labeling here. I've got an absolute book of labeling here. Spare button, good to see. Probably gonna need that since they're almost falling off. 100% cotton and made in China. Okay, that was the work shirt. Honestly, I like it. I think it's great. And now we're gonna move on to the jacket. The inspiration for this comes from another workwear classic, uh, the, the, the chore coat. You've got that very, very simple design with the button closure and the boxy fit, it lends itself perfectly to that Uniqlo oversized aesthetic. I mean, like the shirts, the utility of the chore coat design is at its heart. Unlike the shirt, however, the Uniqlo design guys have taken a a few more liberties with the design details. Gone are the big patch pockets that you would normally find in chore coats. They've been replaced by a much more useful, much more practical hand warmer pocket. I will never be taking a pair of work gloves and cramming them into the pocket and then looking for somewhere to put my pliers. It's much more likely that I'll be trying to keep my hands warm when I'm moodily walking around the streets of Berlin. We still do have the patch pocket on the chest. I mean, that I might actually find useful. What I cannot imagine using is the inner chest pocket on the other side. I, I never ever put anything in, in chest pockets, in the internal chest pockets. It really messes up the way that the jacket sits in the body. If I did need to put something in the inside of the jacket for whatever reason, 
Then I would just use these absolutely massive pockets down at the bottom here. These are a byproduct, a happy byproduct of having the hand warmer pockets. The denim itself is an, an ecru denim, so that means completely undyed. This is the natural color of cotton. It's a, it's a good weight for, uh, for an outerwear piece. I would put this around about 12 ounce mark or something. And okay, does this have a bit of stretch to it? Let's check the label. Okay, this piece is made in Bangladesh. It is 99% cotton and 1% elastine. Uh, so that yeah, explains that little bit of bounce in it. Uh, not really necessary with, with the cut and the fit of this, um, but it's not gonna do any harm, I guess. What else can we say about this? Um, buttons. Okay, here we go. I remember what I was talking about with the, with the shirt buttons being sort of offset from the, the fabric with a little stock. This is exactly the same, but done better and also done with a good reason. I mean, this, this is a thicker denim, so it makes much more sense that you'd need a little bit more space to the buttons. Also with this, there's been a bit of thread that's been round, round? Wound round the stock of the, the threads that were sticking out, giving a little bit more uh, rigidity to how the button sits off the fabric, and I presume a little bit more durability. And construction-wise, on the inside, uh, Nice, clean, you do see a little bit of overlocking, or quite a lot of overlocking actually. It's not as clean as the shirt with the flat felt seams. Maybe this is because it's a thicker fabric and if you flat felt the seams then you're just like doubling up everything. It might be quite bulky around about the, the armholes. Uh, it's still, I've got no problem with overlocking. Overlocking is everywhere, even on some of the best pieces. And this is nice and cleanly done. There's no loose threads anywhere. And that is the jacket. Moving on to the pants. And of course, going with the whole theme that we've been talking about, these are worker pants. Specifically, they are carpenter pants. I can tell they're carpenter pants because of the wide straight fit, because of the big old patch pockets on the back. Then you've got these slanted front pockets. And the telltale thing is you've got this longer pocket here that's useful for, I don't know, maybe putting one of those foldy out rulers in. Right off the bat, what I really do not understand, and the first thing you notice is just how much stretch they have put into these pants. It's insane. There's, there's absolutely, no need to use stretch denim for a pair of pants that are this wide. The wide fit is there to accommodate the movement that you would have to have. The stretch actually hinders the practicality of these trousers. And it's a real shame because otherwise this denim looks great. It's had a slight rinse to it, but it still maintains this really deep, nice indigo. And that rinse has brought out a little bit of character in the denim as well. Maybe Uniqlo just had a few thousand yards or a few tens of thousand yards of this fabric left and they were like, okay, let's just make a pair of work pants out of it. And it just makes the pants pretty weird to wear. They just don't sit well on the waist. They don't fall properly over the, 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 the legs. And when it comes to fades, I mean, okay, I can't say this for sure, but with this much stretch, I guess it's gonna fade, but I don't really know how it's gonna fade. I, I guess it's gonna be kind of weird. But that's my, my big gripe with an otherwise amazing pair of pants. I, let, let's look at the details. So yeah, up here you've got a button closure, you've got a zip fly, good quality YKK zipper. I remember what, what I was saying about the practicality of these pants. No matter if these are perfectly fitting on your waist, with that much stretch, they're gonna end up falling down and maybe you don't want to take the whole workwear aesthetic vibe to that nth degree where you're walking around the builder's bum the entire time. So you need some way to, to keep them up and to do that, they've got like a little waist tie here or you could just use a belt, I guess. Yeah, you, use a belt. Right, so those are the three pieces and I think I can kind of answer the question that I asked at the beginning of the video. Are the other denim pieces from Uniqlo, are they any good? And I have to say, yes, apart from one. The jacket is amazing. The shirt is brilliant. The pants, not so much. That was a bit of a fail. 
but it's an easy fix. Just swap them out for the Unico U salvage jeans. They're amazing. And if you want to know why these are so, so good and why they represent such a good bang for your buck, you can check this video out right here.